Class of 2020, I know I speak on behalf of all the staff here at AMCS in saying that we desperately wish we could be sharing this special day with you face to face. I wanted to share with you a quote that has become, over the years, a personal mantra for me. It's from a guy named Thomas Merton, who was a Catholic monk, poet, and writer in the mid 20th century. He said this, every moment and every event of every man's life on earth plants something in his soul. For just as the wind carries thousands of winged seeds, so each moment brings with it gems of spiritual vitality that come to rest imperceptibly in the minds and wills of men. Most of these unnumbered seeds perish and are lost because men are not prepared to receive them. For such seeds as these cannot spring up anywhere except in the good soil of freedom, spontaneity, and love. I love this quote because it states something that I think we all intuitively know. Learning, wisdom, and knowledge extend far beyond the classroom. Every moment in life holds the potential to teach us about the nature of life, the power of love, and the depth of our own self. And while I'm sure you've had excellent teachers and professors during your academic career, if I asked you about the most important lessons you've learned thus far, I bet few of them occurred in the classroom. Perhaps some of the most impactful moments of your life happened talking to a loved one, on a hiking trail, on a ski slope, or in the pages of a good book. You see, every moment of life presents for us truth and wisdom if we have the mindfulness and openness to see it. Personally, I've found many important lessons in the garden. In my early 20s, I decided to plant my first garden and I had no idea what I was doing. I hastily cultivated some rocky ground, threw a couple bags of manure on the soil, spread a few seeds, and waited and hoped. That first year was full of far more failures than successes, but even those failures taught me much. Since then, I've gotten better at growing vegetables and fruits, but the real reward has come from the sun and the rain and the soil and the metaphors and lessons they contain. So, as an English teacher who loves symbolism and metaphor, I thought the garden would be the ideal place to leave you with some final thoughts before you begin this next season of your life. Perhaps one of the most profound lessons I learned when I began gardening is the importance of good soil. And good soil does not create itself. As a gardener, I have to cultivate the soil, add nutrients to provide a space where the seeds, the bacteria, the fungi, the insects, and other creatures can live harmoniously. We too should endeavor to cultivate minds and hearts that are open and that can thrive in the midst of storms and unexpected events. In that quote I shared with you earlier, Thomas Merton says that only in the good soil of freedom, spontaneity, and love can these seeds of wisdom thrive. And so how have you cultivated or will you continue to cultivate freedom, spontaneity, and love? How have you freed yourself from the external expectations, the self-limiting beliefs, or the infinite shoulds and musts of this life that seek to encumber us? How have you or will you use your freedom to help others and grow a world that is healthier and happier and more peaceful than the one you've inherited? Likewise, how have you embraced spontaneity? Do you have the courage to say yes to adventure, to challenges, and to unexpected paths? Can you fully lose yourself in the moment and find freedom in uncertainty? Do you have the strength to jump feet first and without hesitation when your heart compels you to do so? And what about love? Do you love ferociously as a calling and commitment and not merely a feeling? Do you recognize the ways in which the power of love can transform ourselves and the people around us? And despite a heart that may be battered and bruised, do you have the conviction to continue to love? Ultimately, what I'm trying to say is this. Continue to cultivate your minds and hearts. In adulthood, it's so easy to get lost in the weeds and forget what really matters. 
Just as a garden needs tending, care, care and tend for yourself. Make your lives a place where joy and adventure and wisdom and love flourish. So today, I want to leave you with a small gift. In your graduation boxes, you'll find a small envelope like this. And with this envelope comes your final assignment. Inside, I've placed two items. First, you'll find a handful of wildflower seeds. These are to remind you, as you start this new season of life called adulthood, to sow seeds of kindness, beauty, and joy. Second, you'll find a goat turd. There's a goat turd in your envelope for a couple reasons. First, it's my last chance during your academic career to give you crap. More seriously, it's meant to remind you that sometimes it's the crappiest moments in life that often provide the best opportunities for growth. Your final assignment is this. Place this envelope in your car, your wallet, or your back pocket. This summer, plant these seeds. You can bury the envelope or simply scatter the contents on the ground. Make it a small act of freedom, spontaneity, or love. My hope is that just as these seeds thrive, so will you. Class of 2020, you've been through a lot. Between an earthquake, a building fire, a pandemic, enrollment in college, and the prospects of an uncertain future, you have weathered a lot of challenges. I know I speak for the rest of the AMCS staff when I say that we've been blessed to share in a small part of your lives and your eventful academic careers, and we wish you all the best in this new season. Thank you. <laughs>